Hello and welcome to this week's YouTube video. Today I'm going to show you how I painted Mark and Finfin fin in oils. This video is part one of a three part weekly series. I wanted to show you the three separate layers to this painting. However, the painting has been done over three weeks in multiple sittings, each sitting lasting about three hours. So let's get into the time lapse video and I will talk about what I am doing as I go along. This painting was painted on Dela and Rowney oil painting paper. I did not have a canvas large enough for this painting so opted for paper. There is no particular reason why I use this brand other than it was the one stocked in the local art shop. So stick with whatever brand you prefer. I also do not prime this paper. I use it as is. If you are new to oil painting, there are benefits to painting on paper. Because of its absorbency, it is very forgiving and you are less likely to lose control of your painting like you can on canvas board. If you struggle to keep control of your painting, then you may want to try paper until you have a better handle on how to use oils. I have covered this paper in a wash of raw sienna and mineral spirits. This is a personal thing that I do due to the stark nature of painting straight onto white. You can cover with any colour you like if you want to use a grey or perhaps a raw umber. Think about what you are doing and why you are doing it. There are a hundred different ways to do something. This is the way I do it, but another artist will do it differently and may contradict completely what I say. There is no right or wrong and you must find a way that works for you. I very rarely paint portraits. In the last three years, this is only my second portrait. Generally, it is not my thing, but I just loved the connection between the person and the dog and felt compelled to paint it. The point really that I wanted to make is that even though I don't paint portraits very often, I am still able to have a pretty decent stab at them. This is because I understand the principles of painting. If you understand the principles, you should be able to have a go at anything and it be pretty okay. Very often my students say to me, can you do an example of a painting of a brown greyhound or a cow or a sheep perhaps? All of these examples will follow the same rules. Drawing, value, edges, temperature and colour. If you get all of these right, it doesn't matter about the brushwork. You will do a good painting. You need to forget about the literal objects you are seeing and think of them as abstracted shapes that all need to be observed correctly. But you also need to have a reason as to why you want to paint something. My reason here is the relationship between the person and the dog and that is what I am attempting to paint. If you focus on painting detail, you will have a painting full of detail but with no emotion. I am painting an emotion but I have to capture that emotion in correct drawing, value, edges, temperature and colour. It is a hard thing to attempt to do and it takes a lot of practice, but if you take anything away from this video, then it should be that understanding the principles of painting can be applied to any object, whether human, animal, still life or landscape. And understanding these principles is what will help you to improve your painting. I should also say that these principles are present no matter what medium you are using. So oils, acrylics, pastels, watercolour, digital art on your iPad. It is only the medium that changes and has to be learned how to be handled. The art principles do not change. A word about my palette used. I am using cadmium yellow, yellow ochre light, cadmium red, alizarin crimson, ultramarine deep, burnt umber and zinc titanium white. Mark has dark skin and so I am mixing up a rich black using my brown and blue. I have also mixed up a warm dark brown using my rich black plus cadmium red. I have mixed up two oranges, one with yellow ochre light and cadmium red and one with yellow ochre light and alizarin crimson. 
For my really light colour, I have mixed my two oranges together, added some of my warm brown plus my rich black. I have then added a large amount of white. So this colour is a combination of all four colours mixed together. I'm using this palette to paint the skin. For the sofa, I am using my rich black plus yellow ochre light to give me that khaki green colour. For the wall area, I have added a good measure of white to my khaki green plus a little of my orange mixture of yellow ochre light and alizarin crimson. For my red t-shirt, I have mixed a little of my rich black into my cadmium red just to take the punch out of that primary colour. For Fin Fin, I have used my rich black and added white to give me a grey. A rich black becomes very useful when working in neutrals and switching between warm and cool becomes very straightforward. For the areas in the shadows, I just add more brown and for the cooler areas, I just add more white or blue or both. For any pink that is needed around the eyes and nose, I just add alizarin crimson to the mix. So I'm using my grey as a base and adjusting the temperature with either my brown or blue, my value with my white or rich black and then adjusting the colour if necessary. For Fin Fin's darker areas in the ears and nose, I have used my rich black as a black. My aim in this first sitting is to get the canvas covered in paint in a rough approximation of what I think I see. On this first layer, I am thinning my paints with mineral spirits. It becomes easier to judge your colours, values and temperatures once the paper is covered. I am squinting or half closing my eyes at my reference photo to reveal my larger blocks of colour, value and temperature. I am not committing to any detail or thick paint at this stage as I want to keep my painting open and flexible. So I am sort of scumming the paint with a large brush. The result is something quite patchy and sketchy. I have printed out my reference photo at A3 size, which is the same size as my painting, and I have pinned it to a wall about 1.5 metres away from my workstation. This ensures I am not looking at any detail in my photo because I simply cannot see it. It is very important in the early stage of the painting that I make sure my drawing is correct. I compare my painting and drawing by standing back and viewing my painting and reference photo side by side. If my drawing is off, it doesn't matter how well I paint it, it will look wrong. So it is critical you get your drawing right in the early stages of your painting. I lightly sketch my image onto my paper before I started, but do it whatever way you feel comfortable. If you feel you need to do an accurate drawing beforehand and then transfer this onto your canvas with carbon paper, that is fine. Have a look at this video on my channel that gives you tips for drawing more accurately. That is the first layer of my painting done. Next week I will show you layer 2 and how I got from this to this. I hope you have enjoyed today's video and found it useful. Please like and subscribe if you can and check out my website sarahhallidayart.com where you will find examples of my work and also details of online classes that I run. Thank you for watching and see you for the next one.